Hey guys, good morning. Happy Friday. Um, I just realized that there are four more enhancement techniques to go. Oh my gosh, with my explanation skills, I'm going to spend here two, two next weeks probably. So no matter what, I'm going to finish it, everything today. And luckily, they're all about the same. And expanding means when you, your child is in the uh, one word or two word stages, anything that he produces can be expanded. So whatever he says, you can expand uh, by adding extra words. For instance, apple. So you say, yes, this is a big red apple, or this is a green small apple, this is an apple on the table. And then uh, we have a uh, recasting is kind of the same thing, but you, uh, in this case, you correct the grammar. Ho, ho. Imagine he says, um, crocodile, alligator jumping on the bed. No, alligator jumping on the bed. And you say, alligator, alligator is jumping on the bed. So with the help of the intonation, you draw the attention of the child to the missing piece, which, which was the verb to be, and you model the correct sentence. Improve the quality of the sentence the child produces. If he or she can repeat after you, fine. If not, no, not a big deal. It's just uh, you model the correct way of saying that. And we, um, it's very important because if it's like is jumping is the progressive tense. If we remove the is, then is uh, uh, then the sentence becomes ungrammatical. So um, it's a, for English la language, right? In Russian, we have the. In Russian, we have all these tiny pieces, bits of the words that we call prefix, affix, suffix, and then endings, and all of them mean something. And especially endings are very important. The when the girl is working, is not walking, right? It's not the same as a boy is walking, he walked. Is like so. It's such a big headache um, all the time. She has to hear the correct form because that's a vitally important uh, to acquire that knowledge about the uh, gender and the number and uh, suffixes and affixes. That's important. Like it's not English. It's a completely different language with a different headache. Uh, that's why we are talking about um, model the uh, linguistic. So model of linguistically rich environment, um, you know what you're doing with your language behind the closed doors. You know that there are might be things that you can improve, so improve them for your, ki for your child. Give your child the best what you can give and let them do whatever they want with that later. Teach them the good language so, they, so they, after that they can corrupt it nicely. The last one is a corrective feedback, and this is such a sensitive topic for the people from the United States because uh, if you have a, or some kind of like heritage and you pass through a local education system, it punishes you that way that you become traumatized for the rest of your life. No? From any standpoint, there is nothing wrong about the corrective feedback, it's all how you do that. So the best way to, how to deal with the little kids is through the correct modeling. You just model and be the broken record until they start repeating after you, eventually will they for the older kids, the best way of correcting feedback is involve them into self-correction. You can make uh, some funny game, something like, I spotted something interesting in what you just said, can you find it? Or even if they have uh, older siblings, you can drag those old, older siblings into the game and maybe they can model and show uh, the younger one the right way or whatever way. So um, anyways, uh, the um, best way is to correct once in in the five times so skip four times four mistakes and correct one don't be annoying and that will remove the uh, uh, depression from the whole process